Canto 24, Circle 8, Bolia 7, The Thieves. In the turning season of the youthful year, when the sun is warming his rays beneath Aquarius and the days and nights already begin to near their perfect balance, the hoarfrost copies then the image of his white sister on the ground. But the first sun wipes away the work of his pen. The peasants who lack fodder then arise and look about and see the fields all white and hear their lambs bleat. Then they smite their thighs, go back into the house, walk here and there, pacing, fretting, wondering what to do, then come outdoors again, and there despair falls from them when they see how the earth's face has changed in so little time, and they take their staffs and drive their lambs to feed. So in that place, when I saw my guide and master's eyebrows lower, my spirits fell, and I was sorely vexed, and as quickly came the plaster to the sore. For when he had reached the ruined bridge, he stood and turned on me that sweet and open look with which he had greeted me in the dark wood. When he had paused and studied carefully the heap of stones, he seemed to reach some plan, for he turned and opened his arms and lifted me, like one who works and calculates ahead and is always ready for what happens next. So, raising me above that dismal bed to the top of one's great slab of the fallen slate, he chose another, saying, Climb here, but first test it to see if it will hold your weight. It was no climb for a lead-hung hypocrite, for scarcely we, he, light, and I assisted, could crawl handhold by handhold from the pit. And were it not that the bank along this side was lower than the one down, which we had slid, I, at least, I will not speak for my guide, would have turned back. But as all of the vast rim of Malibole leans toward the lowest well, so each succeeding valley and each brim is lower than the last. We climbed the face and arrived by great exertion to the point where the last rock had fallen from its place. My lungs were pumping as if they could not stop. I thought I could not go on, and I sat exhausted the instant I had clambered to the top. Up on your feet. This is no time to tire, my master cried. The man who lies asleep will never waken fame and his desire, and all his life drift past him like a dream, and the traces of his memory fade from time like smoke in air or ripples on a stream. Now, therefore, rise, control your breath, and call upon the strength of soul that wins all battles unless it sink in the gross body's fall. There's a longer ladder yet to climb. This much is not enough. If you understand me, show that you mean to profit from your time. I rose and made my breath appear more steady than it really was, and replied, Lead on, as it pleases you to go. I am strong and ready. We picked our way up the cliff, a painful climb, for it was narrower, steeper, and more jagged than any we had crossed up to that time. I moved along, talking to hide my faintness, when a voice that seemed unable to form words rose from the depths of the next chasm's darkness. I do not know what it said, though by then the sage had led me to the top of the next arch. But the speaker seemed in a tremendous rage. I was bending over the brim, but living eyes could not plumb the bottom of that dark. Therefore I said, Master, let me advise that we cross over and climb down the wall. For just as I hear the voice without understanding, so I look down and make out nothing at all. I make no other answer than the act, the master said. The only fit reply to a fit request is silence and the fact. So we move down the bridge to the stone pier that shores the end of the arch, on the eighth bank, and there I saw the chasm's depths made clear, 
And there great coils of serpents met my sight, so hideous a mass that even now the memory makes my blood run cold with fright. Let Libya boast no longer. For though its sands breed Chelidriads, Jaculi, Pharaeans, Syncreads and Amphisbands, it never bred such a variety of vipers, no, not with all Ethiopia and the lands that lie by the Red Sea. Amid that swarm, naked and without hope, people ran terrified, not even dreaming of a hole to hide in or of heliotrope. Their hands were bound behind by coils of serpents, which thrust their heads and tails between the loins and bunched in front a mass of knotted torments. One of the damned came racing around a boulder, and as he passed us, a great snake shot up and bit him where the neck joins with the shoulder. No mortal pen, however fast it flashed over the page, could write down O or I as quickly as he flamed and fell in ash. And when he was dissolved into a heap upon the ground, the dust rose of itself and immediately resumed its former shape. Precisely so, philosophers declare, the phoenix dies and then is born again when it approaches its 500th year. It lives on tears of balsam and of incense, and in all its life it eats no herb or grain, and nard and precious myrrh sweeten its cerements. And as a person fallen in a fit, possessed by a demon or some other seizure that fetters him without his knowing it, struggles up to his feet and blinks his eyes, still stupefied by the great agony he has just passed, and looking around him sighs, such was the sinner when at last he rose. Oh, power of God, how dreadful is thy will, which in its vengeance rains such fearful blows. Then my guide asked him who he was, and he answered reluctantly, Not long ago, I reigned into this gullet from Tuscany. I am Vani Fucci, the beast, a mule among men. I chose the bestial life above the human. Savage Pistoia was my fighting den. And I, to my guide, Detain him a bit longer and ask what crime it was that he s that sent him here. I knew him as a man of blood and anger. The sinner, hearing me, seemed discomforted, but he turned and fixed his eyes upon my face with a look of dismal shame. At length he said, That you have found me out among the strife and misery of this place grieves my heart more than did the day that cut me from my life. But I am forced to answer truthfully. I am put down so low because it was I who stole the treasure from the sacristy. For which others once were blamed. But that you may find less to goat about if you escape here, prick up your ears and listen to what I say. First, Pistoia is emptied of the black. Then Florence changes her party and her laws. From Val de Magra to the god of war brings back a fiery vapor wrapped in turbid air. Then, in a storm of battle at Picano, the vapor breaks apart the mist, and there every white shall feel his wounds anew. And I have told you this, that it may grieve you. <laughs> 